Today we're looking at the 18th chapter of Jeremiah. <clears throat> It's 19. Today we are talking about、uh, an example, a story. It's basically progressing from the analogy from previous day. In 18, chapter 18 is talking about Jeremiah is in the potter's house. So, talk about the potter is making a pot, making ceramics, and it was broken in his hand. So he had to build another vessel. So basically, God's plan can be changed. And originally, the Israelites he has a heart, he has a plan. But when our hearts made a choice and we decide not to follow God's plan. God's God's plans will follow the heart of the man and change accordingly. So when we come to chapter nineteen, so it's we are in the potter's house again. Verse one. This is what the law said: Go and buy a clay jar from the potter. Take along some of the elders of the people of the priests, and then he progress later. Then he says, actually, you're gonna break this vessel. So basically, this picture of chapter eighteen is like a comparison. So this picture, which you could actually change the shape, but on this chapter, when he actually become a vessel already, it could be broken. So it talks about a a situation that cannot be restored. So the title of chapter nineteen is "Do not keep a stiff neck, then become a broken vessel that cannot be restored. Do not become stiff neck and become a broken vessel that God cannot restore." So it's basically like a clay jar being broken; it becomes shattered. It cannot be restored to original form. So no matter how much you try to glue together, it will not be exactly the same as original. So what is the most important thing? Why will we walk on? Why will we be able to follow until this point? It's basically the choices we make in life. You listen or you not listen. My life can is our life stiff stiff neck or stubborn. So verse nine to one to nine, you will you shall listen to God. And when you do evil, it become you become too severe or significant or increase your evilness. So when you do evil, God will remind you. God will give you warning. When God reminds you, are you willing to listen or are you able to listen? Or do you actually allow your evil to be magnified, increased? So verse one to nine is basically what God is saying to Jeremiah.、Uh, you need to go and buy a clay jar. Take along some of the elders of the people and the priest, and go out to the valley of Ben Hanum, to the Potsher Gates. There, proclaim the words I tell you. So here it talks about. It talks about the valley of Ben Hanan. So basically, this valley, when it appears, it has a, spe- a special form. It's basically a place where Israelites worship idols. Is where they burn their children as offering. So, what is the entrance of Potsher Gates? It's basically where they take care of garbage and broken pieces, where they take care of、uh, of dead bodies. So, God is telling them to bring the priests and the elders to this place. It's basically using a very 
a visual way to explain to the Israelites, bring the clay jar to go to this place of broken pieces. It's a place where the Israelites does evil, verse 3, and say, hear the word of the Lord, your king of Judah and the people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the Lord of Israel say. Listen, I'm going to bring a disaster to this place that will make the ear of everyone who hears tinkle. He said you to listen. The king and the people need to listen. And here they talk about is that I'm the God of Israel. I am the God of your nation. But today I'm going to send out a discipline. That disaster will come to this place. Not only you will need to listen. But also the people who are listening, you will have tingle in your ear. It will be a sound of shock. Then verse 4 to verse 5. Why are they sending out this punishment, this judgment? For they have forsaken me and made this place a foreign God. So basically, this is the valley of Ben-Hanon. This is where you have done evil. But this place, you have treated as normal. You continue to worship the foreign gods. And then you give, you give away your kids and fill this place with the blood of innocence and build the high place of Baal and burn their children as fire, as offering to Baal. So when, so when I read this, I treat it as if they are treating this place as normal. They have no fear. I have a lot of feeling towards this. Because when I read the book of Jeremiah, the easily that you become withdrawn, that you disconnect. Because you feel like what I'm experiencing, what I'm the way I am here, it feels so different from what Jeremiah is experiencing. Do we build burnt offerings? Do we uh, burn people, human beings? We think about it. We don't do this, right? That even in church, we are clearly know that we are not supposed to do idol worship. But when we look at it in a broader perspective, then you look at your current environment, your city that you're living in right now, actually is the same as Jerusalem at the time of Jeremiah that we actually continue to do idol worship. Actually, there is abortion. You bleed innocent blood. Then we also burn offering to the foreign God that we do not know. But then, brother, sister, do you have this feeling? Actually, we will treat these things as normal. When we look at these places, we use our eyes to look. But today, God is trying to remind us. Use God's perspective to see. We look at the current environment that we're living in. Look at the space that we're currently living in. Especially that we're going through the moon festival. Then you will go to the elders' home to celebrate. Every year you go to the same place. Every year then sometimes you will see in elders, they will worship idols who have shrine their household. But today when I'm reading this, I have this feeling. I, as I, I feel like these pictures, these, these uh, priests. I don't know when, when did I start to have no feelings when I read this. I feel like all my family is just like this. Their house is like this. There's nothing I can do about it. Then this is Hong Kong's culture where I cannot do anything about it. Then in the door, you will have shrine. Then you go to the kitchen, there's another shrine. But today, God is reminding us. Do not treat these things as normal. Do not normalize it. Do not have no feelings towards these things. 
and do not detach yourself from the current environment we live in. Because he's saying that the people of Jerusalem and also the kings need to listen to God's word because these things will bring judgment upon the place, your current place. We need to pray together. We need to have feelings towards the city, especially here. It talks about why the evil has increased and magnified because of 6 to 9. In verse 6 to 9, it talks about the day are coming. Then pe where people will no longer call this place Topheth or the B Valley of ben Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. So 6 to 9, it talks about these prophecy. That this, prop, this um, way of doing it is not the first time. So we actually read it in chapter 7 before already. Then in 31 to 37 of chapter 7, it's actually the same image. You basically see the valley of Ben Hanam and also Topheth as become a valley of slaughter. It talks about this place will be ruined. It talks about the people's um, uh, carcasses will be here. Because here they burn, um, they have burnt offering, they burn the children as offering. So they will definitely be judgment. So this prophecy, it didn't happen just one time. But people choose not to listen. And then the evil become increased and escalated. What's the biggest difference? In the past, they talk about the evil of Judah. But in verse 4, so it actually talks about the king of Judah. I actually found the top to the bottom. Then talks about the history of Israel. And basically during the time of uh, King Josiah. And basically um, he tried to do a, a total... Uh, they, they tried to do a revolution uh, of religion during that time. So the people did not change, but the king at least was trying to become more earnest towards God, more fervent. But uh, what happened to the descendants? What happened to uh, Jehoiakim? So uh, they bring a lot of foreign idols. They bring a lot of idols to Jerusalem. So here it talks about the evil of the king from top to bottom. As if they do not hear God's prophecy. Actually, when you listen, you have to start with authorities. When you listen, it has to do with God's chosen people. Then God will see. Are you listening or are you not listening? They can see it very clearly. Then, brother and sister, we have heard God's voices before, right? But have we experienced God's repeated warning again and again in your life? I remember I have experienced one a difficulty before. I am someone who very self-reliant from young, whether study or coming to church. I want to use my own hard work. I want to give 100%. Of course I will rely on God. But at the last moment, I will give my result, my hard work to give it to God. But when I go back to marketplace, I realize the Holy Spirit continued to remind me, you need to rely on God. And so many times when I close my eyes and try to listen to God, God will allow me to sit in the office and it's darkness surrounding me. And I will work and work and work. But the Holy Spirit not, not only remind me once, but then he asked, keep, keep asking me, do you rely me in your work? But as if I didn't hear again and again and again. 
until when? Well, how, when do I realize I need to repent? Then one time, I actually have a tumor in my body. I didn't know. Then I went to check on the doctor. Then the doctor does not know why. It's out of no reason. But not, and the doctor cannot check and be sure this is malignant. Then I just keep working hard. That was the most difficult period of my life where I, during my work. Every day I work for 12 hours. I just continue to work. When I come to home, I don't even eat dinner and I just work and work and work. That is the condition of my life. But when this happened, I need to ask God. God, what happened? Then God helped me to see my body is actually controlled by God. God will remind me, rely, to depend on God. It's not like God gave me a judgment to change you. Then the doctor said, it's actually okay, it's not, it's not malignant. And you just need to do surgery and it's done. But it took months to figure out this is not malignant. Then what's my emotion during those months? Every day I have to come face to face with God. Every day I need to interact with God. Every day I need to tell God, God, I want to return. God, I need to focus on you. I cannot just pretend like I, there's nothing. It's in my work has no God. Then, brother and sister, actually, our life is just like that. Then God reminds you that you need to give thanks again and again. Then God maybe reminds you, don't have low self-esteem. I will call upon you. And God will value your discipleship. Don't rely on your own strength. But our lives actually is so easy again and again. Or even in our lives in the most dark place that we rely on God. That only you know that God reminds you over and over again. Then we need to listen. Then we know 13 to 14. When you're able to understand the analogy, do not wait until you cannot restore it anymore to return. So there's an actual action in verse 10. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah called Jeremiah to destroy and break the jar in those who go with you who are watching. He bring this jar, clay jar, and he went to the valley of Ben Hanam, also Topheth. Topheth is actually inside the valley. Topheth is a place where they burn the offering. It's where people offer up their children to the idols. God told Jeremiah, you need to break the jar in front of the elders and the priest. And you need to proclaim loudly. This is what the Lord Almighty said. I will smash this nation and this city just as the potter's job is smashed and cannot be repaired. They will bury the dead of Topheth until there's no more room. Then what is, what is cannot be repaired? It means that you cannot be restored. You need to break this jar as if you're breaking the city and break the nation. Cannot be repaired. Cannot be repaired. Brother and sister, does that actually clash to you and some of the beliefs that you have in your life? We live in grace. When we disciples, we will also speak like this. A lot of times we tell our brothers and sisters, our disciples, it's okay. In God, there is always a way out. In God, there's grace. 
we really believe in grace. Because in the past, whether it's in our lives or whether it's in the church, we live in grace. We believe that in our life, where no matter where we went, or whether what kind of dead end that we experienced, only when God appeared, then we hear many, many testimonies. But actually, there's a way out. A broken relationship can be restored. Broken family can be restored. But today, Jeremiah is talking about what in his prophecy? When you again, again, when you don't listen, God will appear. God said, "Cannot be repaired." And he talks about the people of Israel. They cannot be restored. Cannot be repaired. But why would the prophet come to this point? Because then again and again, God asks them to repent. They choose to walk their own path. Brother and sister, we need to have a balance. God is a God of grace. When we return, God have grace. But we, again, again, when God speak, we do not listen. Then in our hearts, in our mouth, we say that God, we believe in you. We want to trust in you. But you just cut us some slacks. I know that you can forgive me. But you just allow me to be self lenient again. You just allow me to depend on myself one more time. Then Jeremiah say what? Do not get to a point where it cannot be repaired. When, when God again, again tried to give you warning. Do not return to this point, because God will give judgment at the end. The God of grace is also God of judgment. He give you this example and tell the Israelites: not only you listen, you need to walk. You need to see clearly this prophecy. You need to see that God is real. And also, verse eleven, or verse twelve. This is what I will do to the place and to those who live here. Declare the Lord, I will make the city like Topheth. <clears throat> Jerm- the house of Jerusalem and the those of the kings of Judah will be defiled like the place, Topheth. All the house where they burn incense and the roof of all the dairy hosts and pour out drinks offering to other gods. <clears throat> They do evil; they defile this place. <clears throat> then the um, then the people choose not to listen. If you don't listen, then you can see, you can understand God's heart. You can understand the work of God. This is God of grace. But when you walk to this point, they need to give judgments. So we don't walk to this point where there's no repair. That no matter what kind of grace that God is able to give you, the hurts will happen again and again. God can heal, but some of the brokenness that God was con- that will still continue to be in your life, as if every wound that God will heal. But God allowed the scar to remain in your life. That some places cannot be repaired. This is God's hand. But then at the end, fourteen to fifteen, in the house of God, do not continue to be stiff-necked. Then he is doing a prof-、uh, after this prophetic act. Then Jeremiah returned from Topheth. Where the Lord has sent him to prophesy, and stood in the court of the Lord Temple, and say to all the people, "This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, said. 
Listen, I'm going to bring on the city and all the villagers around it. Every disaster I pronounce against them because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my word. This judgment is revealing in front of the priests and the elders. And also he proclaimed to all people. Then, then these people, where are they at? They were in the temple of God. Then when I read it, I feel like God gave me an insight. It is the, the judgment is coming at the core of the Lord's temple. Then where is the core of the Lord's temple? No matter what kind of evil, if you're proclaiming the name of the Lord in the core of the Lord, you repent and you fast and you pray, then God's judgment will pass. But in this prophecy was proclaimed at the core of the Lord. Then the people who listen, what do they do? And how do they respond? Then what we see in the beginning and the end. They cannot hear the prophecy of Jeremiah. And what they heard was the Jeremiah's voice. Then this voice is changing the anger of the people because they cannot hear God's voice. And actually what's next is that they want to jail and kill Jeremiah. Then this voice is so uncomfortable for the people of Israel. And then they want to actually eliminate this voice in the house of God. Was not worship or repent. Not fasting or not wailing. It's actually stiff neck. Then God tried to use this to remind our lives. We are in the court of the Lord. Then God is happy to speak to us. Every morning devotion. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us. Sometime we are willing to repent. But sometime to us it's just a sound, a noise. We have no feeling inside of us. Well, not only that, in the morning devotion, uh, the times when we have been ministered, God used our cell leader to speak to our lives. But to us, it's just sound. We are stiff that maybe we don't even know. We're our interaction with God. Shoot. Is it just actions or just a, just a ritual? Or even in your hearts, are we able to tell God, God, I want to return. I do not walk till this point where nothing can be repaired. I want to become your holy vessel. I want to become a complete vessel and to hold your Holy Spirit, to hold your presence. I do not want to get to a point of no repair then as leaders or as prayer warriors, we do not want the, our city become a place of no repair. May God's spirit continue to touch us. Let's rise up and praise God together. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you are in our lives, that every single one of us, that you help our health, that we use our hearts to be able to you to listen to you. May you bless us. May you help us. May you speak to us.
brother, uh, brother and sister, let's raise our hands and let's praise our God together. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Lord, I look up to you that every single morning that you help us to be able to come and follow you. That our hearts, that every single morning that when we're in the core of the Lord, we continue to listen to you again and able to hear from you again. That when you give us your words, we're able to return and restore our lives. That in your heart, when we're coming to and hear from you, we can restore our vessel. Even though we might be broken, Lord, we ask you to restore us. And thank you that in, the, in God's word today, God said that Jeremiah brought the priest and the elder. They went to the valley of Ben-Hanam. And at this place is where the Israelites do evil, where they do burnt offerings. They hear that all the leaders and all the people to listen one more time. How does God give judgments to the people? Then today, let's come before the Lord and let's hear from God together that you can help us to see where we fall down where our emotions our anger our emotions that we are in lust we have a lot of negative thinkings or maybe in arguments that we repeat it we repeat it again and again just like the israelites in certain areas in our life god say no no more stop but we continues lord holy spirit we wait on you that today how does prophets proclaim to the people that the Holy Spirit help us to hear from God, to hear from the Lord? That even when they're, that we're willing to return and repent today before God. Holy Spirit, we want to open ourselves to you. Now, when we see this in our hearts, that we have different feelings. But we cry out to the Holy Spirit that we will have the courage to walk upon it. Or maybe I feel like I cannot overcome it. Or maybe I try to play down and feel like this is not a big deal holy spirit please open our hearts open our hearts that when we come here to encourage your word when we face this kind of situation that cannot be repaired cannot be restored holy spirit please help us that you can help you the holy spirit will help you that you can you can come authentically before god how can we gain strength from god holy spirit please help us Help us so we do not become someone who cannot be repaired or be restored. That's we we in a bit we will come and repent before the Lord. Now you can kneel down if you feel like you want to do that. Then, then we uh, so we can make sure that we do not face the greater judgment from the Lord. Then I feel like there's some people have issue with lust, issue with emotions. 
that you feel like emotions that you cannot control, your anger, your negativity, or in judgment that you feel like you cannot help but want to judge others and you cannot get rid of the ease of the Pharisees. The, a lot of times that people try to tell you, but you keep saying no, 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 no. Then we come cry out to God together. We open our hearts and cry out to God together that we ask God for mercy, that we open our mouth and then we repent before the Lord and may God help us all. Jesus, we pray and then we thank you for your grace that we can come here and then as we face our sins, the judgments, that, that is insights in your revelation that when we come, that what are the things that we need to face? May you forgive us. May you repent. Uh, as we repent, would you come and help us that in our hearts, that whether it's the words coming out of our mouth, the criticisms or judgments cannot accept others, Lord, please help us. Then we have grace and mercy upon us in our hearts that our personalities or our opinions is too strong that we are self-centered. That it becomes our bondages. Lord, please help us. Help us. That when we are willing to come and repent, when we come and willing to return to you, we praise you, we help us. That this morning when we come and pray before you, Lord, please come and help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to kneel down and we pray. In the scripture, it talks about the king of Judah and the people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty said. said Listen, I'm going to bring a disaster to this place that makes the year of everyone here the tinkle. For they have forsaken me, made this place a foreign God, and they have burned incense in it to the God that neither, not, neither nor their ancestor know, nor the king of Judah ever know. Let's pray for our family. Let's pray for our households that our house hold that when they do idol worship when they do these things we have no feeling we take we take it as nothing but our city worship idols and we feel nothing or we'll say you know maybe 10 steps 100 te- te- uh, 100 steps we already see a shrine or a, a idol worship but we feel nothing that as we are fasting and praying that as we cry out to you that in this time that we cry out to you lord that would you come and forgive us and will you forgive our households then the sin of our household because we have defiled your land we have defiled your courts then we we feel self-righteousness. We have bleed the blood of the innocence, but we feel nothing, God. God, please come and forgive us. Please forgive us that our perspective, we have no failures or our hearts have go against you, has turned against you. That during this time that in our city, we have we don't feel bad we feel nothing that we have a lot of um, uh, sin of uh, uh, murdering uh, killing of in our hearts towards others god would you come and forgive us that in all these things all the sins that we have committed we want to come and bring them before you that we want to rely on you depend on you god that this uh, our city that in this, um, in our nations, uh, all these evils has been done. Lord, please come and help us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. That you have mercy upon us when we come before you and then see the evil that's done in this world at this time. That they are, we ask your judgment do not come. We pray that you will come and that we can see ourselves in the sin we have committed. That you forgive us, Lord. That you help us, Lord. 
Lord, please give us one more chance to come and return back to you. That you give us, that we see when we return and repent, that you will clean the land. That you will restore your people. That your household, that we do house, that we worship idols, that we burn offerings, that we have a lot of these secure fortresses instead of our lives that are shaken, that in our household that is unshaken, that when we come before these shrines, I pray that you break, you break all the traditions, all the worship. That we will all return back to the household will return back to you. That the whole nation, the whole city will return back to you. That would you come and help us? That when we cry out to you, we proclaim your name. That you will come personally. That the whole city will return to you. That we come and cry out to you. That would you come and listen? Lord, we praise you. Will we cry out for your help? That our hearts are cold that are the family members who did not believe in God we felt nothing then I just got used to it and I don't do anything about it but let's all open our mouth and let's pray to, for God to help us to burn the fire in our hearts and reignite the fire and do not be cold and feel nothing again and disconnect no more disconnect that we pray for our family members we pray for our friends who are unbelief that we proclaim to God that God will enter into their hearts and God will do work in their hearts that these places when we pray that God will change us God will change us that we can restore ourselves and return that we don't become cold towards God in Jesus name Let us all rise. Let's continue to cry out to God. Cry out to God. God, open your eyes. Please give us your ears. Listen to our prayers, God. That you listen from heaven and you forgive our sins. Hear our prayers and heal this land, Lord. Lord, open your eyes, Lord. Open your ears. Here is a crowd of people crying out to you. We are crying out for our lives, for our own lives, for our families, for this city. We are crying out in anguish. Today, you've chosen all these brothers and sisters, everyone. To come before you to cry out they are all chosen by you to be 
your Levitical priests and priestesses. They are here crying out to you. We are representing ourselves, are representing our families, representing Hong Kong and the residents. We raise our hands, we lift our hands, we want to pray for the authorities in Hong Kong. To pray for all the authorities and officials in Hong Kong. We cry out, we say, repent to hear you so that the authorities will listen. They will lead the people to come and repent. How important this is. Lord, you want all of us to come and cry out to you, to come and repent, repent, so that the hearts of the officials, of the authorities, they can turn their hearts back to you, that they will repent and they will come to you. Let's open our mouths to come and pray for the executive in Hong Kong. Lord, we want to give you the leadership of Hong Kong and also some important officials that we want to come and pray with you. Lord, we want to pray. Please enter to their hearts, Lord, that you allow them to know your name, Lord. These people in this place, they have power. They have authorities. They can make decisions. They want to build up Hong Kong. But God, if they don't have you, they don't know you. It's, it's truly helpless and blinded. Lord, please enter into their hearts. That you allow them to know your name. And that every time when they make decisions, they have the scripture, they have the guiding of the Holy Spirit, that every time when they listen to your voice and they cry out to you and when they pray to you, Lord, please through their hands that you rise up, you rise up Hong Kong. You allow Hong Kong as a place of joy, place of celebration that in your hearts, that through the authorities that they will listen, that you'll bless the land of Hong Kong. This place, the people will come and return to you, will come and get to know you. Lord, that you will rise up. You will rise up more, more people, more people that will pray for this, for the leadership of Hong Kong. That their hearts will be filled with your hearts. They will understand your hearts, God. That they can understand that heaven and earth that God created heaven and earth this king of kings and lord lord is worthy of our worship is worthy of our praise father may your holy spirit come and fill hong kong then you come and help us they want to pray for pastor joshua and simo also the the third round of people in europe from new crop 611 Lord, we want to pray for them. Lord, we want to cry out to you. Not only in Hong Kong will return to you. Not only Hong Kong needs to repent, but Europe needs to come and repent. And the whole land will come and repent. That you have sent, you sent them to Europe. That they will come and be a, a forerunner to come and cry out. The heavens and also the angels will come that wash away all the force of darkness, all the idol worship. Father, that darkness can, cannot proclaim to the lights. Only you are lights when you shine upon this land. Lord, that this land can grow, can be revived, can be resurrected. 
Lord, we cry out to you. Let's use uh, uh, speaking tongues to cry out to God and proclaim. Lord, we welcome you. Lord, we know that all these are in your hands. That we are in your hand because you are the Father. Then I pray for every single one of us here today. Have a reverence towards the Lord. Have a heart that reverence God. That you give your hearts to the Potter, you give your life to the Potter. Bless you, that in the Potter's hand, that you become a treasure vessel, that that becomes something, someone that you be useful for God. That when your heart is willing to listen, your ears willing to listen, we're able to return and complete return to God. All the disasters will be far, far away from us. Will be far, far away from the city. The city will allow the righteous to be saved. The city will not be destroyed. That where you are today will not become a broken vessel that cannot be repaired. God bless, bless us that we become reverence towards you. We that we put our life in your hand. Bless you that you will experience miracle today. That you return to God, then God will return to you. In Jesus' name, we bless everybody. That we can become the children that God loves. That God will become our God. In Jesus' name, Amen. That will be the end of our morning devotion today.